Whether you're joining us here in our interactive webinar platform, in our YouTube stream, or in a recorded session, we're so glad that you've joined us for today's webinar, Enhancing the U.S. Army Performance Through Key Nutrition Initiatives, brought to you by the Nutrition and Wellness Team of the Military Families Learning Network. I'm Jen Schielek, Webinar Coordinator, and I'd like to call your attention to the link on the screen and in the event information box. That link will take you to slides, handouts, and other event materials that are available for you now, during the session, or even in the recorded session at learn.extension.org slash events slash 3370. The Military Families Learning Network is part of a DOD-USDA partnership. And our passion is to connect military family service providers and cooperative extension professionals to research and to each other through innovative online programming. Thanks for taking a minute to share in the chat window where you are geographically. If you haven't already, we'd love to hear where you are. We'd also like to learn a little bit more about you. So let me open up this quick poll to find out a little bit more about you. If I take away your chat window, you can get back to it in just a minute. But if you would take a minute to select your current employer from the ones listed on the screen. If you do choose other, when we get back to the main window, you have the opportunity to share in the chat window about your current employer. We'll leave that up for just a minute for you to select from the options presented to you. It's great to see such a diversity of employers represented here today. Thank you for doing that. Now let me get back to why we're really here. Again, if I cut you off when you were sharing where you were geographically, you're in there. But again, the reason you're really here is for this webinar. So let me turn the mic over to Robin to introduce herself, today's presenter, and today's topic. Robin? Thank you, Jen. Good morning. My name is Robin Allen, and I'm the Social Media Specialist for the Military Families Learning Network uh, Nutrition and Wellness Concentration Area. I'm very excited to introduce our speaker, Major Tamara Osgood, MSRD, LD. Major Osgood just completed one year fellowship at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention with a focus on obesity and eating environments. She is currently a public health dietitian at the Army Public Health Center. She has over 15 years experience as an RD, including clinical oncology dietitian, critical care burn dietitian, director of nutrition care division at two separate Army community hospitals, a 15 month deployment to Iraq in support of nutrition care at the largest theater internment facility and the executive fellow to the Army Medical Specialist Corps Chief. Prior to commissioning as an officer, Major Osgood spent four and a half years in the enlisted ranks as an Army Intelligence Collector Morse Code Interceptor. She has over 17 years of experience in the military. Her military awards include the Bronze Star, which she earned while deployed to Iraq. She holds a Master's in Human Nutrition from the University of Alabama and a Bachelor's in Nutrition from Georgia State University graduating summa cum laude from both. Her deployed medical experience were published along with three fellow military RDs in October 2014 in the peer-reviewed journal, Nutrition and Clinical Practice. I had the great pleasure of hearing Major Osgood speak at FENCI also. So now I will turn this over to Major Osgood. Hello, can everyone hear me okay? I'm assuming because we've already done the volume check. Um, so I am going to go on and, um, of course, start off with the key one, which is disclosures. Of course, the views expressed in this presentation are those of mine and not necessarily reflect the official policy of the DOD, the Army, or MedCom. And these are your learning objectives for today.
I always like to start my presentation off with this slide. Some of you might have seen this presentation. I, I've noticed a, a lot of uh, dietitians' names popping up in the chat window, and uh, I had the amazing opportunity to present some uh, Nutrition Army initiatives at the recent um, FINCI, which is our Food Nutrition Conference um, that happened last October. Um, one thing that I think stuns a lot of us is when we consider the fact that obesity is possibly or is a national security issue. Um, and when you look at it in that aspect, it really brings home the impact and importance of nutrition initiatives specifically because it truly does affect the number one issue in the military, which is readiness. Readiness is at the top of all commander's goals. And obesity is a national security issue. You can also look at, um, if you have time to Google it, I was able to work on an infographic with the Center for Disease Control and the Mission Readiness Group, and it's titled Unfit to Serve, and you can Google that and it'll come up. Our service members and dependents are not healthy if we cannot meet the objectives of the four R's. So poor health obviously increases our cost of health care, which results in us spending much more money on treatment than on prevention. Some of you might be aware or not or seen these numbers before, but the fiscal impact of obesity, and these numbers actually include tobacco as well, um, obesity and tobacco related issues causes DOD or cost DOD over $3 billion annually. Wanted to touch on some of the main points for our four R's that we look at in recruitment. In 2010, some of you might be aware of these numbers, but 27% of recruits did not qualify for service due to not meeting our minimum high weight standards. By 2030, the CDC is projecting that 64% of our population will not qualify due to weight. Readiness and resiliency is also a major concern. More service members were actually evacuated from Iraq and Afghanistan for non-combat issues than combat related issues. The leading cause of injury in the military is serious sprains and fractures. Research does show that overweight and less fit young men and women are at much higher risk for these injuries. And of course, finally, our fourth R, retention. Failure to meet weight standards is the leading, leading cause of involuntary separation from the military. These numbers alone is what brings our focus on nutrition initiatives, performance nutrition, and health to the front. Before I started talking about some of our initiatives, I wanted to share with you um, the Health of the Force. Some of you might be familiar with the Health of the Force. The first publication was actually released in November of 2015. It's been released annually and can be found on the Army Public Health Center website. This edition of the HOF describes ongoing efforts by MedCom and its partners to improve the health of Army communities by promoting proven healthy promotion or health promotion and wellness strategies for the total Army family. And I'm sure many of you already know that when I say total Army family, the definition that we look at, and this, this includes total DOD family too, is we're looking at active duty, National Guard, Reserve, our retirees, our dependents, our family members, thats as well as our GS civilian employees. So that's our, our total DOD, total Army family. So this one in particular is House of the Force, just the Army. Um, but the report does um, combine surveillance metrics with program snapshots to inform and highlight initiatives that reduce and prevent illness and an injury. These pers perspectives, in addition to the new features in this report, creates an wonderful tool for leaders at all levels. The Health of the Force aims to facilitate informed decisions that ultimately can help improve the well-being of our total Army family. And a copy of this can be found at the link above, or literally you can just Google Health of the Force Army Public Health Center. These are some highlights for why are we measuring the health of the force, and this is going to lead me into some of our discussions, predominantly um, getting a, a better understanding and variations of overall health, leading health indicators such as our performance triad measures, sleep activity and nutrition, and creating a standardized health assessment process aimed at um, looking at the Army as a whole. 
wanted to share with you some of the numbers recently that came out on, excuse me, on the most recent Health of the Force. So our medical readiness is identified and was achieved by only about 83.3% of active component soldiers. Of course, the goal is to have this at 100%. In 2016, 51.6% of soldiers were injured. Some individuals experienced multiple injuries during that period. And when you have an injury, you're non-deployable, and that affects readiness. Also, the health of the force looks at our performance triad indicators, sleep activity and nutrition, or the the tenets of the performance triad. These are measured through our global assessment tool, the GAT, and sleep was identified in 2016 at 68.4 out of 100, activity 83.6 out of 100, and nutrition 71.4 out of 100 based off the questions that the soldiers answer, and I'll be going over those P3 tenets later on in the presentation. Other information that you'll find in Health of the Force is overall obesity. Of course, we are still much lower than the national average. The national average in the United States is 30% obese population. In the Army, we're currently at 17.3%. Um, this also gives information about tobacco, sleep disorders, and substance abuse. I encourage you to take a look at the Health of the force, a lot of great information if you haven't already um, taken a look at it. As I transition into talking about our Army initiatives, I wanted to start off with the social ecological model. Because when you're looking at it from a public health perspective, the best way to influence a population is, of course, better understanding your population and also looking at it from the whole outside community. So from the individual all the way up to a strategic level. So of course, a military community involves DOD and civilians. And in order to help improve someone's public health um, weight, you want to affect someone in a multifaceted approach. So looking at individual programs, programs that can also help affect the installation or the community, as well as at the service level for policy um, and DOD level. And those are some things that I'm going to talk about today, is our some of our strategic initiatives, our installation initiatives, and of course, individual initiatives. So performance triad actually color, covers the spectrum. So not only is this an individual initiative, but truly this is a strategic initiative. Sleep activity and nutrition collectively have an impact on overall health and performance and also influence each other. Many of you are probably already familiar with the performance triad. Um, and if not, of course, I'm just going to go over some of the basic tenets and also share some information about our lessons learned from our force comm pilot that we did in 2015. The performance triad it is an Army initiative geared to help provide triad started in its inception in 2012. This was at the onset of the now retired um, Lieutenant General Jorge's tenure as the Army Surgeon General. Lieutenant General Jorge was looking for a way to integrate scientifically based principles of sleep, activity, and nutrition into the lives of soldiers. So thus, the performance triad, or what we refer to as P3, was born. P3 initially focused on influencing behavior change through health education, um, a marketing campaign, and using technology to track fit fitness. Using these venues, the ultimate goal of P3 is truly to encourage soldiers to achieve seven evidence-based targets. These targets are listed here on the screen. Performance triad in this exception has a return on readiness. I won't read all of the information on the screen, but I wanted to highlight a few areas. Just considering one sleepless night, less than four hours, can impair performance as much as 0 0.10 blood alcohol level. It costs $4.2 billion to train and replace all soldiers with a BMI greater than 30, and they are 36% less likely to deploy. 
Also, overweight recruits are 47% more likely to become injured and use 49% more health care in the first 90 days. Clearly, poor sleep, activity, and nutrition can have a major impact on overall readiness of the force and is very costly to the government. Investing in improving our soldier sleep activity and nutrition behaviors has the potential to save the government a great deal of money and is beneficial to a soldier's overall health and can better posture our force to win today's wars and defeat our adversaries. Now I just wanted to show um, and share with you some highlights from the pilot. So there was a FY15 to 2016 performance triad force comp pilot, and um, this was actually quantitative data that was analyzed from over 4,000 subjects. And over a six-month pilot, positive effects were observed in six of the 22 measured outcomes. And those positive effects are highlighted here on the slide for you. You know, I noticed that Robin put a, a great question in the slide, and I'm curious to see the feedback coming back of, of how many people possibly participated in some of these P3 um, or how pearl success stories, particularly across the units, and how leadership kind of worked in facilitating. One of the areas that I believe that we struggle with most for P3 is the area of sleep. One unit in particular actually incorporated the concept of sleep baking prior to a field exercise and saw benefits to sustainment of performance under sleep deprived conditions. And on the screen you can see several of the, the comments from senior leaders at the pilot units. Can you hear me okay now? I noticed someone said they can't hear me. Okay, great. Also, we had some results from focus groups that provided insight um, for where we should be focusing some of our improvement in the nutrition environment on installations. So soldiers' perceptions on the food environment were identified during the P3 pilot, and I will be addressing that later on when I talk about the next two Army initiatives, Go for Green and Hack. So there's several takeaways from the pilot, but to summarize, it really takes leader buy-in and shifts in how the Army does business to incorporate better sleep activity and nutrition practices, a focused effort on improving the installation environment to help make the healthy choice the easy choice, and while the PRDs, the um, personal readiness devices, are exciting and an improved self-monitoring behavior, overall the use of the PRD did not contribute to a significant change over time in this population. So it's suggesting that we may not be necessary to facilitate and maintain behavior change. P3 is definitely going in a very exciting direction right now, and the focus truly, as I was saying, is across the spectrum of the social ecological model, where our line of efforts include leadership, um, mission planning, of course this also incorporates getting P3 into policy, as well as efforts at the unit and installation. I'll talk a little bit more about HAC as, as one of the initiatives. And also our line of effort for is in messaging and of course evaluation, making sure that we have the best available evidence for our P3 initiatives. The next initiative I wanted to talk about is the Go for Green. Go for Green is not just an Army initiative. This is an initiative that's actually a DOD-wide initiative. I um, wanted to go ahead and discuss just a, a little bit of the history. Lieutenant General Hartling was the first commander of the initial military training who partnered with the Joint Culinary Center of Excellence to bring changes for performance nutrition into Army dining facilities. This was the birth of the Gopher Green, which originally was truly just a 
labeling program where you would walk into a dining facility and items were either identified as green, yellow, or red. Green encourage you to consume more, yellow a little bit less, and then red to limit. What I'd like to do is some of you might not be aware of the transition, so this is a little bit more about the history of Go for Green 1.0 to kind of where we're at right now with Go for Green 2.0. So Go for Green 1.0 truly started with the Soldier Fueling Initiative of Lieutenant General Hartling. It was adopted by the Army, Air Force, and Navy. Um, the version was also used when the Healthy Base Initiative, which I'll touch on slightly after this. Some of you might be familiar with the Healthy Base Initiative, and some of you may not. Um, also, it was incorporated into Field to Fight, which was adopted by the Marine Corps. We had quite a few lessons learned from Go for Green 1.0, and this kind of transitioned us into Go, Go for Green 1.5. Um, this was tested in 2015 as part of the Army Performance Triad pilot that I just shared some information with you about, and it was actually implemented in 2015 at the Navy afloat and ashore. We also had several lessons learned from our P3 pilot in 2015, as well as the Healthy Base Initiative that truly led us to Go for Green 2.0. Go for Green 2.0 um, was defined in February 2017, and currently implementation is in progress amongst all the services. I wanted to share this slide because it does tie in P3 with Go for Green and how they're all interrelated, and truly how P3 and the Performance Triad Pilot really helped us identify lessons learned and issues with the Go for Green 1.0 that led to 2.0. Um, soldiers in the focus groups indicated that P3 definitely resulted in a heightened awareness of the importance of nutrition. Um, at the same time, we were implementing changes in Go for Green 1.5 in those dining facilities, and 50%, 56% of them mentioned noticing those positive changes in the defect. But overall, 61% said that there still needed to be a change in the defect, and 83% felt that the defect was truly a barrier to nutrition. This is what ultimately led us to go for green 2.0. This is a nice um, comparison of the differences between 1.0, 1.5, and 2.5, and you can look back at this later because you have a copy of the slides. So Go for Green 2.0 programs. Also, I just saw Commander Allen mention the commissary has a parallel program. Absolutely, and it's outstanding. And I'm actually going to talk about that a little bit when I talk about the initiatives for the Healthy Army community and um, a lot of the great initiatives that the commissary is doing. Go for Green 2.0. 2.0 program requirements are now not just a simple labeling program. We are actually incorporating not just food placement strategy, but marketing and education, ongoing training for all dining facility staff, and standardization of menus as well as displays on how the labels are identified. Um, there's also specific criteria for the food and beverage coding. Previously, items were identified as green based on calorie and fat percentages. The new Go for Green 2.0 coding truly incorporates the idea of processed food as well as sugar and also fiber. Um, we do pull out um, sodium and identify this separately um, because, of course, our soldiers have a, a different need for sodium than our civilian population. I wanted just to show you some highlights of the program. Um, of course, standardized training for the, through the Go for Green program office and coding of food and beverages highlighted specifically, and all of this information is found on a website that I will provide for you at the end. These are the new look of the cards that you'll start to see in dining facilities that have transitioned to the Go for Green 2.0. It's not just the single card, but trying to make it easier for some of the dining facilities to have just one um, 8x10 card that lists all the lineup for the hotline menu or everything identified on the fast food. Um, also incorporating standardized 
choice architectures, what we refer to as food placement. So that way we're putting all the healthier green items at the front of the line and with an easier reach. So it's not just on the food line, but it's also in the refrigerators and on the salad bar. Um, food placement also incorporates, for example, if you've been to a dining facility, you can go to the fast food line because you want to get a, a hamburger that day. But if you want to get a vegetable, now you have to get back in line to the main line. What we're trying to do is take that same vegetable, let's say the vegetable of the day is corn and green beans, offering it not just on the main line, but also making sure that it's offered at the fast food line. So that way you can, you can get a hamburger that day, and in, instead of having your side as french fries, maybe you'll have a side as a vegetable. Again, just putting things in an area that makes it a lot easier. Just wanted to show you the slide to see that the other thing is really health messaging and marketing, identifying a healthy featured meal of the day, and um, having the plate in front as they walk into the dining facility. Also highlighting infused fruit water and messaging for posters and table prints and social media. And there's a lot of great resources on this website, so please take a look when you have time. Before I transition in, about, we'll oh yes, go for green. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, thank we'll you. Identify. We'll go for green, identify vegan and vegetarian choices. No. No. So Gopher Green will not identify vegan or veg vegetarian choices. Um, it just identifies based on the coding for the criteria that involves um, trans fat, calories, fat, fiber, process, and sugar, and then has a separate identification for salt. But it won't identify vegan or vegetarian choices um, as you would see in a restaurant. But I, but I do understand the question. But one thing I do want, um, and I see Wendy's question now, is that one thing that we are trying to do is incorporate more vegetarian choices that are better tasting, of course, in our dining facilities. But don't forget we have beautiful salad bars in our dining facilities, and that is one thing that is really kind of um, advanced to where they were before. We, ha we are getting more with, with stricter um, criteria regarding it has to be 50% dark leafy greens on the salad bar, ensuring that we have at least 8 to 10 fresh toppings available on the salad bar. So those are other things that are being incorporated in the Go for Green 2.0. Um, also increasing the amount of legumes and how often they need to be offered throughout the week. And if anyone has specific questions on those, I could, I could probably spend an hour talking about Go for Green, but then I'd have to bring in Beth Moreland, who um, has really taken in this program to the level where it's at right now. I'm just I'm just sharing her great work. So on to the Healthy Base Initiative. I would be amiss to, to jump right into Healthy Army Communities without talking about the Healthy Base Initiative. The Healthy Base Initiative was a comprehensive three-year effort and it measured over 30 health and wellness initiatives at 14 locations. This was actually a DOD-wide program that incorporated all the services. And Healthy Base Initiative kicked off in 2013 and went until 2015. And it also incorporated the same time um, as the P3 Forcecom study was going on and looking at the Go for Green 1.5 that I, that I just discussed. On this screen is some of the lessons learned that we had from HBI. So um, I think all of us on this call who's remotely familiar with our food system understands that the DOD food system is complex and needs to be transformed. Um, we do have a need for greater focus on nutritious food. We need to make the healthier choice the easier choice. And it needs to be a multifaceted approach. One single intervention is not going to help improve our eating environment and our dining facilities, not one isolated change. So we need multiple options at more than one location. Dining facilities do offer he healthy options, 
but there's some other things that affect access, which I'm sure if there's any soldiers on the call right now understand that um, there's some barriers with times. Dining facilities are open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, trying to reach out and get to that dining facility right after PT, but you can't go to the dining facility because you're in your PTs, um, but you want to have a healthy breakfast. Um, a lot of barriers, and those are things that I'm hoping that healthy Army communities can actually help impact. Um, also, vending and fast food venues need significant improvement. Um, family members wanted education on healthy eating, and we truly needed better and improved assessment and measurement tools um, so that we could improve on future efforts. So the Healthy Base Initiative truly led us to healthy Army communities. When the Healthy Base Initiative ended, General Dahl, the IMSCON commander, said, I want to continue this. So Healthy Army Communities was actually directed by Installation Management Command um, and is a coordinated Army-wide effort to improve nutrition and build healthy environments on Army installations. It also aligns with the INCOM Command Policy 25, which directs garrisons to improve the environment to make healthy, healthy choice the easy choice. I also um, would be amiss not to mention that this, this, we are talking about Army initiatives, but the Air Force has a very similar initiative called the Smart Fueling Initiative that they're doing at some of their installations. And the initiatives that I'm talking about today, um, I want you to know that those are the very similar initiatives that the Air Force is also working on. I wanted to share with you the mission and vision of Healthy Army Communities. And now into the exciting one. Um, this is huge. And I, I, th this is the first time in, in, um, in history. And is Go for Green only an Army initiative? No, Connor. Um, Go for Green is a DOD-wide initiative. So Go for Green is actually being incorporated at, at all services. So I'm trying to keep up with, it, with the chat. And, um, window also. But um, Healthy Army Communities has actually brought all the stakeholders to the table. The thing that I'm extremely excited, this is one of the initiatives that um, is, is near and dear to my heart, I'm most excited about. Um, all of our initiatives are great, but Healthy Army Communities is the, the first time these stakeholders have come to the table. Um, look at all the partners that are involved. We've We've got the commissary, we've got NWR, we've got exchange pattern. The dietitian, I'm going to keep pounding and highlighting food. Please note that Healthy Army Communities is not just food. Um, we have some other initiatives, and I'll make sure I touch on those too. Um, but again, as a dietitian, nutrition is at, at my heart. Um, it's really exciting to see all of these stakeholders come together and really compromise because the main goal is to really improve the health and well-being and nutrition on our military installations. And one thing that is predominantly different about Healthy Army Communities than the Healthy Base Initiative is that these are initiatives that the stakeholders brought to the table, initiatives that they are already um, excited about and wanting to focus on. And that's the difference between Healthy Base Initiative. It was taking about 30 programs that we were trying to make work on an installation versus what are some programs that the stakeholders are already working on. Currently, this is the the demonstration locations, so of course, we're, we're starting at these sites. Uh, Fort Belvoir was the, the first one that I had the opportunity to go to in November, followed by Benning, or excuse me, followed by Vicenza. How can I miss my trip to Italy? Um, then going to Fort Benning, Fort Riley. Um, our next stop is going to be in the Pacific. Um, we are not 100% sure if it's going to be Camp Pumphreys at this time because, of course, there's, there's a lot going on in Korea right now, but um, we're, we're looking at possibly Korea or Hawaii. Um, Fort Sill is what we refer to as our legacy site because they were a healthy base initiative site, so they've been really helping us along our way um, with our Healthy Army Community demonstration locations.
So what I'd like to do is talk about those initiatives, because this is truly the exciting part. And just so the team knows, from my first hack site on the ground at Fort Belvoir to when I was at Fort Riley, I have already seen several of these initiatives kind of come to, to visualization and, and grow, particularly with um, the NWR and the the ACs. So, um, of course, as I already discussed, JCCOE has a large innovation, of course, Go for Green 2.0. They also are working to increase and improve upon or add, because some places don't have healthy grab-and-go options, or actually, I should say, they don't have grab-and-go options at all. Dining facility, classic walk-in, tray, food that's consumed there has to be consumed at the dining facility, and then you can't leave with food. So JCCOE is looking at a way to have it for our busy soldiers to be able to run in, grab something, and come out. Also, they're collaborating with Natick to help improve um, healthy recipes. They've coded over 400 recipes. We have several hundred and you know, that has the recipes that have been coded already. And these recipes are based off of 100 servings, of course, for, for dining facility. Um, some other great initiatives that um, JCCOE is working on is, of course, helping us with our, our MNEAT, which I'm going to discuss later, which the MNEAT is our Military Nutrition Evaluation Assessment Tool. And what we're doing with this is we're using it to be able to assess each one of these venues. And I have a few slides to talk about that because that's kind of another one of my, my babies that are close to my heart. And um, I saw Pam Gregory here is on the call, and she's She's also um, heavily involved with that. She's one of our Navy partners. Exchange innovations. I am super excited about what AFES and the exchange has been bringing to the table. Number one, their focus is on healthier brand transitions, bringing in other restaurants such as Fresh Inns, Muscle Maker Grill. Um, Aubon Payne has actually been recently bought out by Panera, so this was um, Oh, someone just said I'm cutting out. Hopefully, I'm doing OK. Um, so Aubon Payne and AFES were working on a contract to bring Aubon Payne onto military installations. I hope that's a big cheer for all the group to be talking about. But when Panera bought out Aubon Payne, this put um, a slight kind of delay in it, but it's still something that they're trying to work on. Um, the other thing that they're working on is increasing the number of healthy vending machines that we have on military installations, as well as improving menu labeling and the Operation B fit specifically at our express stores. I have seen the the most advancement, should I say, from the hack innovative sites in the express stores specifically, where truly I had not seen no sugar added um, fruit, or of course we have the fresh fruit by the POS machines, um, but the no sugar added fruit that's in the refrigerations, I, I hadn't seen carrots and celery before at, you know, Technically, this is a gas station. So in comparative to what we're looking at to off-post um, gas stations, our express stores are above and beyond. You can get fresh salads. And of course, um, some of you might be coming from those smaller sites that, hey, I haven't seen that at my express shot, but it's coming. Please look for the BFET stickers and the highlighting of healthier options. Commissary. Someone else mentioned this earlier. We have amazing initiatives coming out of the commissary. Many of you have already seen this. This is definitely not new, but we want to make sure that we're highlighting it and promoting it. So we have the, um, the nutrition program guide. That's, that's the green thumb. And that basically identifies, and someone mentioned earlier that it closely relates to Go for Green 2.0 coding, and it does. They're not exact, but it's very close. And again, you're just highlighting and identifying healthier foods that are particularly in the aisles. Um, also, thinking outside the box is another great um, initiative that's come out. And you know, this is basically that the dietitian um, we, we've done the work for you is what um, Deborah Harris has has uh, created 
you know, the quick meal solution. So basically the recipe is right there. It's a healthy recipe and everything you need for that recipe aside from the, uh, the meat is found at an end cap in the commissary. Um, also something that Deborah Harris wants to start incorporating and, and DECA wants to start incorporating is cooking classes. And of course they've been shopping tours, huge collaboration with MTF, um, as well as truly increasing their healthy grab and go products. And then the, what we call the perfect meal, prefect meal, the uh, meal replacement products. What this has been brought to the commissary for is the price point is, is technically on point. This has been advertised as really the fourth meal for those soldiers who can't make it to the dining facility before the hours close. This is a fresh meal, not frozen, that soldiers can, or anyone, doesn't have to be soldier, but can go purchase in microwave and it's still a healthy meal. So. Um, please look for those at the commissary. Again, these are some of the really exciting innovations coming out of Hack. Also, Imcom G9, General Dahl just signed the 25% healthy menu requirements. Um, please know that uh, NWR are using the same, um, very similar requirements as BFIT. If anyone has any questions about that, feel free to contact me and I can certainly um, send that to you. Also, they are, um, they have, uh, I've met their chef Juan, he's fantastic. They've actually been introducing healthier recipes. Fort Belvoir has started to actually introduce quite a few of them at their bowling center, um, as well as they're starting to look at setting up charging stations. What I love about the charging station is this is a possibility that can be areas that, what, how should I say this, areas that don't have the ability to, um, for example, a golf course that lacks the cooking capabilities or refrigeration to truly bring in healthier um, items, they have teamed up with U.S. Foods to incorporate charging stations that are set up kind of in, in healthy food deserts. So you can have a charging station in that, in that golf center or that bowling center, so that in particular has healthy food available within the charging center. So those are things that they're starting. Uh, the first charging center was actually set up at, um, at the, uh, I'm so sorry, this is escaping me, but this was in Disney, the Shades of Green, and um, they're also working to set one up at Fort Sill. Um, and of course, they're also introducing some digital menu boards as well as doing um, healthy cooking training. Other stakeholder in innovations, of course, it's not just food. Um, we have the child and youth services focusing on the physical activity versus sports teams and the presidential youth fitness program, MCOM G9 and FMWR um, with the strong bands and monthly fitness challenges. Also, um, Going on to Army Public Health Center, we are integrating the MPAC with MCOM G4 Master Planning, um, and this is basically the ability to identify um, physical activity abilities on a military installation. So how are our sidewalks? Do we have bike paths? Looking at truly, is it physical activity friendly? Um, also looking at incorporating more tobacco-free zones where children play and learn. Currently it's set up around the MTS, but what we'd like to do is expand this to the gyms and the um, CYSs and some of the sports fields. And of course also promoting P3 for total Army community. What we often say is hack is powered by P3. A lot of our Army initiatives are powered by P3 because everything incorporates these three really main tenants, sleep, activity, and nutrition together. So Healthy Army Communities continues to try to bring all three to the table. What I'd like to do is move on and talk about, so how are we kind of assessing the nutrition status we have all these great initiatives going on at the express stores, the fast food, the um, NWR um, bowling centers. And um, keep in mind, I want to make sure that I mention that the 25% menu policy for healthier items in NWR is truly at the the warrior zones, the golf, and the bowling centers. It's their snack bars. So this won't necessarily incorporate into the officers club because it's a completely different area. Um, most of you are probably familiar with that um, because it's, it's not the 
or, or our NWR cafeteria styles. So really it's just the snack bar that to be looking out for those. But um, back to my MNEAT tool. So uh, the military nutrition environment assessment tool is what we are using to assess the nutrition status on military installations. Um, quick little bit of history, the MNEAT, um, I'm using MNEAT 2.0 and you know, some of these numbers, um, the Gopher Green 1.0, 2.0, the same with the MNEAT, but we're currently testing the MNEAT 2.0 version for Healthy Army Communities. But I wanted to give you a little bit of information about um, kind of where MNEAT came from. Um, in the beginning, it was actually created based off of two civilian assessment tools to fit the needs of a military installation. So basically, MNEAT was used to assess a military installation's environment related to promoting and supporting healthy food. Um, the MNEAT is currently used by all three services, Army, Navy, and Air Force. And I don't include the Marines on this, but with the most marine and navy installations are put together and those are being used also for the navy um, and i can get more information on that but i'm i'm most aware of the army and navy and the air force but this is a dod wide tool the MNEAT 2.0 sections are very similar to the 1.0. Uh, we have one to assess the fast food. We have one to assess the morale and welfare recreation food facilities, one for commissary, the express shops, vending, and dining facilities, as well as community and work site. One of the main differences between MNEAT 1.0 and MNEAT 2.0 is we are no longer just looking at the availability of food. Um, the predominance of questions for MNEAT 1.0 were based on food availability, whereas we are truly looking at five key constructs for MNEAT 2.0 is are there food policy, healthier food policy in place? Of course, food availability is important, but are they also incorporating choice architecture when you have the food, um, the healthier food available, and also food labeling? So you might have healthy food available, but are you doing health messaging to promote that healthy food, and is the healthy food being labeled? Also, for our non-appropriated fund um, areas, because obviously the commissary and dining facilities cannot adjust price because they're appropriated funded, but food price, are there any type of incentives for foods that are healthier over foods that are not healthy. So um, something that I've recently talked to some of the AFES um, stakeholders about is when you first walk into an express store, there's often those combo meal prices. So something I've asked them to do, and they're, they're taking a look at it, is um, how about having a um, banana, coffee, or water, and a breakfast sandwich as one of those meals identified right when you walk into the express. Again, that could incorporate some benefits for lower price, and also making sure that you're having um, sales on fruit, which they've actually recently started incorporating. And when we talk about choice architecture, is making sure that that fruit is right there by the POS machine and having water available by the POS machine. Um, and when I say POS machine, I mean cash register for some of you that might not be familiar with that. And again, there's a lot of great information about Healthy Army Communities. And I'll share some websites at the end that you can go for more information. Oh, great question by Zoe. What are the data collection methods for MNEAT? So currently MNEAT and um, the MNEAT 1.0 is currently available online. Um, literally, I, I hate to say this, but just Google it and the uh, Navy has housed it. And basically you print it off and um, and the, the, the data and the calculation, you can do it and then enter it into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, what we're trying to do with 2.0, we're still piloting it, so it's not available out there online um, unless you want to be a pilot site. Um, but we are also currently putting that into an Excel spreadsheet. And the data, actually, and I'm glad you asked this, Zoe, because I should have touched on this. Um, MNEAT 1.0 was point for point. Um, what we're trying to do with MNEAT 2.0 is actually provide a, um, a scoring ability so that we are not asking yes no questions that you get points based on um, how many fruits and vegetables are available so you get points for zero points for one points or 
two or three because research shows if you have three or more options of fruit available for choices that you actually are more likely to consume a piece of fruit. So those are things that we're taking into consideration and we're currently using in Excel. But um, what I'm working on right now with our program evaluation team here at Army Public Health Center and um, our military our work group for MNEAT is to be able to enter this information into Varent. It's a survey-like tool that could then enter the data into there based off of our scoring and have the information. So that kind of takes away that use of, of having to use an Excel spreadsheet and it could be right there at your fingertips on your phone. So again, those are, those are just uh, what we're trying to pilot right now, but feel free to reach out to me because um, we're really um, we're really excited about where we're going in the direction with MNEAT 2.0. As I'm transitioning down the social ecological model, so we kind of talked about P3, definitely working that into policy as well as our go for green and our hack would be installation level. Um, really wanted to make sure I put information out there about the Army Wellness Centers. This is definitely not just an installation, but also an individual effect on a, on a person, in addition to, of course, being able to go see a dietitian at a medical treatment facility. But um, here's some great information about our, our Army Wellness Centers. So they provide integrated and standardized primary prevention programs and services that promote enhanced sustained healthy lifestyles to improve the overall well-being of soldiers, family members, retirees and civilians. If you haven't if you have a Army Wellness Center in your location, please take advantage of it and um, and go by. Here is a list of their standardized programs and services. They can do a health assessment review. Of course, they can do exercise testing for physical fitness. They can also do metabolic testing as well as they have the bod pod. Um, they do stress management and general wellness and education and also tobacco education. And if you want more information on P3, they incorporate P3 into all of their education programs and truly um, share sleep activity nutrition um, from the Army Wellness Center. And here are some websites that you can go for more information. I want to make sure I'm saving some room for questions at the end, but we have our Great Performance Triad website, um, more information on Go for Green, um, our Healthy Army Communities, as well as information on the Army Wellness Centers and our locations. Definitely. We want a um, huge acknowledgments and a big thank you to Army Foster Division, our Installation Management Command and Hack Joint Subsistence Policy Board, Board Go for Green, um, our military community as a whole, Healthy Base Initiative, and Total Force Fitness Operation Live Well with Captain Ellenberg. Um, it really is a team effort to truly impact our military um, as a whole to make sure that we are at top-notch readiness. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to present our really exciting and great initiatives. Um, I'd love to take any questions. I was trying to scan, but uh, if anyone knows me personally, I can get distracted, so I, I could have gotten way off on my presentation. <laughs> Major I can scroll back um, through and see. Um, are there any restrictions? Oh, yes. You oh, kind Major, of broke um, up Andrew a little bit. Okay. Sorry about that. Any tips or materials for reservists? That's okay. I'm a reserve RD in a very large CSH that doesn't drill near major installation where most of these programs are available. So Performance Triad is, you can absolutely utilize that because you can go to the website and pull up all of our great information on the Performance Triad. Um, so Army Public Health Center and the Army as a whole is truly going to a, a digital first focus to, to get away from um, handouts and printed materials, but there's a lot of great information that you can print off on that P3 website. Also, if you do come to the Army Public Health Center website, we do have a shopping cart where you can go in and all you have to have is a DOD um, email 
address. So you should be able to get into that shopping cart. And there are some things still available that you can order and, and have mailed to you. So it's not just for active duty for those particular items. Also the go for green items. Um, there's some great posters and table tents that reserve units can use um, for them that even though that those are installation levels. Um, also, I wanted to throw something out there. Um, I think that you actually, um, Robin and Jen had them present, but for those reservists, please know that there's a whole nother um, uh, study going on called Building Healthy Military Communities. This is being led by Captain Ellenberg, Operation Live Well. 80% of military families live off post. So these great installation programs are, are awesome to affect those that live on post or work on post. But for our National Guard and reserves, they're looking, building healthy Army communities is truly looking at what are those gaps that we need to fill of things that are available um, outside in the community versus what's available on the installation. And I had an amazing opportunity when I was at the, the CDC to help link um, Cap Mellenberg's team with the CDC so that the public health state representatives for CDC are involved in this. So reserve and, and National Guard, I, I can send you more information on this, but please look because I'm pretty sure Robin um, and, and uh, um, the M uh, they already had this presentation is what I'm trying to say, so there's a great information out there. So, um, I did see a question about dietitians in Army Wellness Centers. Yes, um, we highly encourage um, medical treatment dietitians working with the Army Wellness Center. Um, this is something that I recently presented on when I gave a JAND presentation. The only restriction when, and I hate to use that word because it's negative, but the only restriction is a dietitian cannot be um, housed, cannot have an office in an Army Wellness Center um, because each well, Army Wellness Center, um, Todd Hoover, who's the director of the Army Wellness Centers, like to call it the MIC Wellness Center because it's a strict um, standardized program. And so it when you walk into an Army Wellness Center at one installation, you want it to be exactly the same at the other one. So if one's not able to have a registered dietitian, and also there's a significant difference between public health nutrition and truly medical nutrition therapy. Um, so dietitians can teach classes at Army Wellness Centers, and we highly, highly encourage collaboration with Army Wellness Centers. It should be a two-way street. Most Army Wellness Centers will um, actually, it's standardized in all of them. They will ask their their uh, clients, because they're not patients, the clients questions, and if they come out at risk, i.e. they have comorbidities or it looks like it's something outside their scope, they will refer that patient to the MTF. Um, and I encourage that, that bi-directional flow of dietitians referring to Army Wellness Center um, and back and forth. I think in the interest of time, uh, we need to get through some last few slides so people can um, move on with their day, or we can also hang on if there are any extra questions. If um, Major Osgood you didn't mind, wouldn't mind hanging on a little bit after the hour to see if uh, there are any more sure. questions hanging out. So thank, thank you so much. You. This was incredible. My head is spinning, um, and I've got to go back and listen to the recording so I can get all this information down. So, and thank you to our participants for being so chatty and participating and sharing information and resources in the chat pod. So today we are offering um, one CEU for registered dietitians to receive your CPEU certificate. Please complete the evaluation on this Qualtrics link and it's also, um, it will also be on the learn page too, posted after this webinar. And if you have any problems with that, you can contact Kristen DeFilippo, and, and her email is on the side chat. We are so proud to introduce our upcoming event, The Power of Family Mealtimes, Strategies to Promote Health and Well-Being. It's August 21st, 2018, 11 to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, and the extension link is there. And I'm going to turn it over to Jen. Thank you, Robin. 
Thank you to everyone who participated today. Thank you to Timra, thank you to Robin, and thank you for everyone to, for making this a great online learning event. We do invite you to explore all of the learning opportunities that we offer through the Military Families Learning Network, and we encourage you to share them with your friends and colleagues. Topic areas do include nutrition and wellness, but they also include personal finance, military caregiving, family development, family transitions, network literacy, and community capacity building. We will leave this room open for another minute or two to allow you to collect any links you need or make any last comments that you'd like to post in the chat window. And then we do invite you to close your browser to leave the event. We hope that you have a great day and we do hope that we see you again at another Military Families Learning Network online learning event soon. Have a wonderful day.
Again, we'll leave this room open for just another minute or so if you need to collect the link for the evaluation or post any final questions or comments. Please go ahead and do that and then you may close your browser to leave the event. Thanks so much for attending today.